Al-Kahira, or Cairo as it is called in English, it is the capital of Egypt, and the literal meaning, if we transfer it from the Arabic language, is the dominant, strong, firm, capable of everything, or omnipotent. Cairo gained its status and influence on various civilizations, thanks to its strategic location, which the people of Egypt chose for it since the dawn of civilization. And it was distinguished from the rest of the historical capitals in terms of continuity, so its development formed a series of episodes. It began with the city of On in the pre-dynastic era, which served as the religious capital after the unification of the country and the beginning of the dynastic era at the hands of King Mina. Later on, it was known by the Greek name Heliopolis, the city of the sun, or its current name, Ain Shams. The city of Babylon was established by Ramesses II and took its name from the Babylonian captives who revolted against him so he built the castle in which he arrested them, and then gave the name to the entire city. Then the Romans developed it and built a military fort with the stones of the existing Pharaonic temples. On the towers of the fort, they built the Hanging Church, the Church of St. George, and some other churches that were built on the walls of the fort. This area is now known as Coptic Cairo. And in the year 641 AD, the fortress of Babylon fell at the hands of the Islamic conquest, and its fall signaled the entry of Islam into Egypt, and the Amr ibn al-Aya's mosque was built, which is considered the first mosque built in the continent of Africa. Then the Abbasids established the city of Al-Askar in the north, and after that the city of al qatai in which the famous Ahmad ibn Tulun mosque is located. Then the Fatimid army entered Egypt under the leadership of Jahar el sakili and expanded in the area of Cairo, and called the city Cairo el muz which turned into its current name Cairo, and during their era, the Al-Azhar Mosque and Al-Hussein Mosque were built. In the era of the Ayyubid state, Salah al-Din al-Ayubi annexed all the old suburbs and built walls around Cairo, and he built the walls of Magra el Aoun and his famous citadel, from which he made a center for ruling Egypt, which lasted for hundreds of years. Cairo lived a golden age during the rule of the Mamluks, a state that emerged from the womb of the Ayyubid state and established itself on its ruins, after the death of Saladin. Despite the tyranny, bloody conflicts and corruption that took place against it, the Mamluk state was a building and construction state, the most important and largest architectural facilities dating back to the Islamic era in Egypt date back to that era. Among the facilities of this era is the Sultan Hassan Mosque, which is described as the jewel of Islamic architecture in the east, and next to al Rafai Mosque. Khan al-Khalili is a symbol of the architecture of the Mamluk markets, as the Khan is 600 years old, and it is considered one of the oldest markets in the Middle East, and it still maintains its ancient architecture since the Mamluk era. The Egyptian government is now developing that area, which includes the city of Fustat, and turning it into an open museum, soon, and we will explain to you the details of it later. The Ottomans came and destroyed the Mamluk state under the leadership of Muhammad Ali Pasha, who completely destroyed them in the massacre of the castle in which the famous mosque was built. The Ottomans were interested in building the luxurious palaces that remain proud until now in Cairo, and the rule of Egypt moved to Abdeen Palace during the reign of Khedive Ismail.
During their occupation of Egypt, the British established new neighborhoods such as Heliopolis, Garden City, Zamalek, and Mahdi, and built the railway system in Egypt. The Baron Impain Palace was built in 1911. Then Abdel Nasser, the Egyptian president, came to establish Nasser City, and the expansion of building Cairo, and building the famous Cairo Tower in the heart of Cairo on the island of Zamalek in the middle of the Nile. He moved to rule Egypt to the El Itahadia Palace. The area of Cairo is increasing in the modern era to include the cities of Giza, Helwan, and Shubra al Khaima to become Greater Cairo. And with the increase in the size and density of the population, many new urban communities have been built around Cairo, the latest of which is the new administrative capital, which will transfer the rule of Egypt again after its completion. Of course, the Egyptians did not stop dazzling the world in modern architecture while preserving the ancient heritage of Egypt. They did not stop building mosques, the most famous of which are Al-Fatah Al-Alim Mosque and Maser Mosque, which are located in the new administrative capital. Cairo is now linked by a large network of roads, metro networks, and monorails, which have been greatly developed in the last 10 years, thus making all Cairo's landmarks easily accessible to all. There is a video of us talking about it. As for the express electric train, there is also a video of it here. Egypt has been the gift of the Nile from ancient times until now, and of course, Cairo is also the gift of the Nile. Around it are the most important historical areas, hotels, and government institutions. The most prominent of them is the Egyptian Museum in Tahrir Square. It is enough for you only to take a car tour or by foot in the areas of central Cairo to feel the heritage and nobility in its streets. The Nile River tour remained a major activity for all visitors to Cairo. The Pyramids of Giza are the most famous landmark in the world. It is located in Giza, west of Cairo, and near it, the largest museum in the world for one civilization is being established and it is the Grand Egyptian Museum that we are all waiting for its opening. I know very well that the pyramids area has many bad memories with many tourists, because of the chaos and street vendors who exploit some tourists financially. That there is a complete development taking place in the pyramids area, including the entry and movement system, even the toilets, and you will see a lot of radical change there when you visit again. I know that a few Egyptians offend us, 
But the Egyptian people are kind, generous, tolerant, and hospitable, and you will love them very much. Naturally, with any country in the world, people differ in their nature, customs, and traditions. You must know the customs of each country before visiting it, and it is preferable to accompany one of the citizens of Egypt while you are touring in it. Like me, for example, I welcome any invitation to accompany visitors from the channel's followers. The many, many landmarks of Cairo are not enough to explain them in one video or even 10 videos. Cairo has developed a lot from before, and it has a lot worth visiting because it is the most culturally and civilized city. For more information about ticket prices and opening times for tourist attractions, you will find it on the official Ministry of Tourism website. After searching a lot in the sites, I found this comprehensive site in which you can find all the tourist attractions of Egypt, not just Cairo. You will find all the details, even the available toilets and their locations. I will leave you the link in the description box. The Egyptian government is trying hard to develop tourism in a different way. Those of you who have not come in 10 years are invited to visit now. Egypt is not like before. As for the opening of the Grand Egyptian Museum, it has not been officially announced. Like you, I'm eagerly awaiting its opening, and you can learn a lot about it in this video.